today we are going to study the subject our rewards in heaven before i go to the notes which i have written down i just want to read few things from angus bible dictionary what it says about reward and uh, salvation so rewards are offered by god to a believer on the basis of faithful service rendered after salvation hope you heard it rewards are offered by god to a believer on the basis of faithful service rendered after salvation that is the first thing what is mentioned in this dictionary bible dictionary says that it is offered to a believer on the basis of his service for the lord as a believer what he did for the lord okay second it is clear from scripture that god offers to the lost salvation and for the faithful service service of the saved rewards i'll read it again it is clear from the scripture that god offers to the lost salvation and for the faithful service of the saved rewards so salvation to the lost reward rewards to the saved or the saints okay that is the second thing third salvation is a free gift while rewards are earned by works salvation is a free gift you don't have to do anything other than simply accepting believing whereas rewards are earned your faithful service your uh, committed life your uh, sincere walk with the lord all those things will be rewarded so that is the third thing fourth salvation is a present possession on the other hand rewards are future attainment to the to be dispensed at the second coming of the lord jesus christ so right here a believer possesses the moment he receive the lord he receives salvation but the rewards are obtained when our lord jesus receive us in heaven after receiving us i didn't know i didn't know i i do not know how to type it out and send it to you otherwise i would have sent it this dictionary uh you know definition and uh, explanation is very very helpful for a believer to understand what does it mean to receive rewards in heaven and these rewards are for the saved people believers so salvation is a free gift on the basis of calvary basis of what the lord jesus did for us for that all what we had to do just open our hearts and receive christ so you received salvation but rewards are on the basis of your faithful life from day one of your salvation until you leave this world so for uh, rewards we have to work for salvation we don't have to do anything it is on based on the basis of jesus work on the cross in order to receive rewards in heaven i have given the title you know rewards in heaven in order to receive the rewards in heaven first we have to reach there so going to heaven 
is the first requirement to receive the rewards in heaven. So, if you are believing in the rewards, you should be absolutely sure that one day when you leave this world, you will reach heaven. I think a few days before we have discussed, the moment Lazarus died, the angels of God came and took him to Abraham's bosom. Rich man also died, but he went to Hades. So a believer needs to know, if he is a believer, needs to know, because I belong to Christ, because I received eternal life, because I received forgiveness of sin, because I belong to Jesus Christ, I will definitely go to heaven, not on the basis of what we did. And on the basis of what we did, we are going to get rewards. Uh, these two things believers need to distinguish very, very clearly. So first we will see a few things how a person, a person can enter into heaven. So when the Lord Jesus was giving this sermon on the mount, several times he mentioned about entering to heaven and also rewards in heaven. Matthew 6 and 7, he mentioned this again and again. How a person can enter into heaven, 5 to 7. How you can enter into heaven, how you can receive rewards in heaven. So we will uh, look few verses which uh, emphasize how a person can enter into the kingdom of God. Okay, Matthew 5, 20. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 20. For I say, uh, one, sorry, sorry, five, uh, yeah, five twenty. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Unless your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So Pharisees and scribes, righteousness, external righteousness, that was not enough for a person to enter into heaven. That means Jesus' time, the most righteous people who are seen, they were Pharisees and scribes. Scribes were people who are copying the Bible. Pharisees was another sect who were, you know, very disciplined in life, very strict in spiritual things, biblical things and all. But Jesus is saying this righteousness is also not enough for a person to go to heaven. And he says, there is another righteousness. How we get that righteousness? It is the righteousness the Lord Jesus gives us. Unless you receive that righteousness, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Second Corinthians 5.21 How we get this righteousness? Second Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay. Here, Jesus became sin for us, or he took all our sins upon him. And now, our sin is punished there. Now, Jesus gives his righteousness to us. Our sins were transferred on him and his righteousness is transferred on us. So, unless we receive this righteousness, 
which the Lord Jesus gives, we cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So that word, enter, is important. If you want to enter the kingdom of God, you should receive a far superior righteousness. A greater righteousness than the Pharisees and scribes. That only the Lord Jesus can give. Only those who receive that righteousness will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Matthew 7, 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there at. 14 also. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Okay, here Jesus is saying there are two ways there is a narrow way, and there is a broad way. And he says, if you want to reach eternal life, you have to enter through the narrow gate. And how do we know that a person entered through the narrow gate? Because then the way is also narrow. You, you will see that man is walking in the narrow way. So entrance is narrow and the way is also narrow. Whereas the road which leads to destruction, the way which leads to destruction, wide is the gate and wide is the road which leads to destruction. So a person has to enter through the narrow gate. What, what does it teach? In order to enter into the kingdom of God, a man has to forsake many, many things. He has to leave many things. Then only he can enter. He has to confess all his sins. He sh should be prepared to leave the world and the systems or various practices, various habits of his life, sins of his life, everything he rejects and uh, repents then only he can enter into the kingdom of God. Because only a man can enter through that gate. It's very narrow. And those who have entered through the narrow gate to go to eternal life, you will recognize them by walking in the narrow way. So that is important. Here Jesus is saying, you enter. That means you are not in the kingdom of God. You are outside the kingdom of God. Now the kingdom of God is open for you. You come and enter through the narrow gate. Okay. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Okay. Here Jesus is saying, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, there are people who take the name of Jesus and pray and, you know, all these things. They are very familiar with the name of Jesus. But Jesus is saying by simply taking the name of the Lord, nobody will enter. And uh, then what do a person has to do? But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So what is the will of God? That we see in John 6, 14. Believing in him whom God has sent into this world. That is the will of God. Shall we read that? John 6, 40. And this is the will of him that sent me. That every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For going to heaven, this is the will of God. 
For believers, there are many other will of God. But for going to go, uh, heaven, it is the will of God that everyone should believe in him. Believe in whom God has sent. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we read in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 uh, that God wills that every man should believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone should be saved. That is the will of God. But how a person can be saved? What is the will of God? He has to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all the religions in the world, including Christian religion, what is it? Uh, what is the teaching? You save yourself through your good works, try to go to heaven. Keep on doing good works. That is what all the religions are teaching. Unfortunately, including Christian religion, telling their people, be good and do good works so that you can go to heaven. But here the Lord Jesus is saying very clearly, this is the will of God. What is the will of God? You should believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, whom God has sent as the saver of the world. Then only you can enter into the kingdom of God, not by simply using the name of Jesus. You know, people who are born and brought up in Christian homes, we know that they are very familiar with the name of Jesus. Right from the childhood, you know, they uh, go to church and they hear prayers. So they, uh, you know, call Jesus as Lord, Lord. But here the Lord Jesus says, everyone who is calling me Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom. Unless you do the will of my Father. And this is the will of the Father that a person should accept Jesus Christ, who is the saver of the world, whom God has sent as the saver of the world. Uh, a person should receive him as his saver and Lord. Okay. Then only he can enter into the kingdom of God. In all these verses, Jesus is emphasizing the importance of entering into heaven, going into heaven. Okay, we'll read one or two verses more. Uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, 43 to 47. Mark 9, 43 to 47. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life main than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worms dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if, they, if, and if thy food offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter half into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy, thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where the worm okay. dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For Here are three times the Lord Jesus is saying, three times the Lord Jesus is saying, it is better for you to enter into life. It is better for you to enter into life maimed, lame or blind with one eye. Better. Instead of going to hell with the, both the hands, both the legs and both the eyes. So sometimes what stops people from entering to heaven, entering to the kingdom of God? Certain things they want to see. They enjoy some pictures, probably a few things in the YouTube. They are addicted to it. Without that, they cannot live. They know that as a believer, they cannot do this. So they want to continue in that sinful habit. And what they are going to lose? They are losing the kingdom of heaven. 
and they will end up in hell. Then certain people have problem with their hands. What is the problem with their hands? They are taking bribes and uh, they may be doing many things with their hand and uh, so they want to continue with that one. So that is their problem. So Jesus is saying better to go to the kingdom of God with one hand than going into hell with both the hands. So what Jesus is teaching us here, probably you may lose many things in this life. You have to forsake many things. You have to say no to many things. You have to say that, no, I don't want this. I don't want this sin to take me to hell. I am ready to reject this. I will live with minimum things. 50% of the things which, uh, which are allowed for me, I'll be happy with it. Other people or uh, uh, before salvation, many things what a person was seeing, he will stop seeing. You know, there is a song in English, things I used to see, I see them no more. Things I used to to do, I do them no more. Place I used to go, I go there, go there no more. That kind of seriousness, when he comes between heaven and hell, and uh, for a person to go to hell, he can live uh, you know, the way he likes, he can see what all he likes, he can do what all, what all he uh, likes to do, he can go to anywhere and everywhere, where he wants to go. But after becoming a believer, he will have restrictions. It is just like a military man. Probably until few days before, he was just like a normal citizen of India. He was going in the way he liked. But the moment he joined with the Indian army, there will be a lot of restriction. Then the, uh, the Indian army will decide for him. And uh, what he has to do, what time he has to get up, what dress he has to wear, and how he has to appear before his seniors, how he has to go to the training uh, ground. And everything will be decided by the army. This man will not have any choice. And I tell you, Christian life is much more serious. It is not just, you know, raising hand in a meeting and, you know, signing a paper or saying that I will also follow Jesus and uh, taking baptism and all these things. These are all, you know, anybody can do. That is not actually Christian life. What is Christian life? You commit your life completely to the Lord. What all the Lord wants you to reject, you are ready to reject. Then only you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. This uh, people need to understand. Okay, there are um, many more verses, but one familiar verse, one more verse I want to read about entering into the kingdom of heaven. And uh, the, I have uh, many, many verses here, but uh, we don't have that much time. How a person can enter into the kingdom of heaven? We come to John's Gospel, chapter 3. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. Chapter 3, verse 3. A very familiar portion, familiar verse. Here Jesus is saying, telling him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay. Here Jesus is saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Truly, truly, I say you. This cannot be changed. This cannot be altered. This is the truth. What is that? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So a person must be born again. So that is born again means God gives us a new life. The old is past. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The moment you came to Christ and accepted Acknowledge that you are a sinner. 
you deserve the punishment and you sought the pardon of god you said sorry for all what you did and accepted christ as your savior and lord god gave you a new life that we cannot produce god gives us and uh, what jesus wanted to tell this religious man your religious practices are good your knowledge is good you are an accepted acceptable teacher you are a wonderful man everything is fine but if you want to go to the kingdom of god you have to receive this new life from heaven this is the life which god gives to a man who confesses his sin and uh, wants to go to a uh, kingdom of god so all these verses i i i could have shown you many other verses how to enter into the kingdom of god so if you want to receive rewards in heaven the rewards are going to be given in heaven so a person needs to know that he is on the way to heaven he will reach heaven he already entered into the kingdom of heaven so that is the first part second thing what we are going to see is rewards what did jesus say about rewards in heaven we will again go to matthew's gospel chapter 5 verse 11 and 12 <coughs> matthew's gospel chapter 5 when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you okay here jesus is saying you know sometimes we want a christian life to be very smooth without any problem it is not like that after becoming a christian we may face various problems because we accepted christ and we belong to christ people will persecute us and they will say all kinds of evil against you falsely because of christ that time what do you have to do rejoice and be exceedingly glad or great is your reward in heaven without doing anything a believer can get lot of rewards when people persecute him and uh, speak all kinds of evil things falsely actually you are innocent you didn't do any of those things but because of your faith in christ you suffer these things and uh, when you do that Jesus is saying your reward is increasing great in the kingdom of heaven i notice the three things here so first of all our rewards will be there in heaven then secondly our rewards will be very great you will have great rewards that is what the lord jesus said your reward in heaven great is your reward in heaven so we will get a great rewards thirdly it is in heaven or it is not here on this earth there are only very little rewards we get in heaven most of the things are there in heaven only one day we will go there and we will receive those rewards so here jesus is saying if you are a persecutor if you people speak against you people make comments people speak uh, lies against you falsely all because of your faith be happy be joyful because your rewards are great in heaven so we are going to get lot of rewards because for christ sake we have gone through various criticism and problems and comments and uh, other things i know believers who paid a bigger price for their faith they had to leave their home they lost their ancestral share from their family it sometimes lacks and uh, uh, crores of rupees for things they just simply rejected it you all might have heard about that great man boxing 
and uh, today there are many assemblies in uh, india and uh, different parts of the world uh, uh, you know connected to his name of course he didn't encourage that somehow that is the way those assemblies are known they are very close to us and uh, this man uh, went to england to study engineering there he came to know the lord when he returned to india and uh, none of them in their family his parents his wife then his children none of them were ready to receive and uh, he, he lost all the ancestral property but before his death do you know in india how many uh, assembly buildings were in his name all the assemblies were registered in his name but uh, finally this man called all the leaders of the churches and said you know it cannot be it should not be like this it is a wrong thing we did come on let us make a trust and uh, transfer all these properties in trust name so he did the rightful thing but i wanted to say he paid a big price for his faith and his wife never accepted him his sons were after him for money they never accepted his faith so there are people who come from different backgrounds and paid big price they were rejected and despised and forsaken and uh, people spoke all kinds of bad things evil things falsely against them but they suffered so what the lord jesus is promising don't worry about it everything is recorded one day you will get great reward in heaven if we uh, suffered like that if our relatives rejected us disassociated with us if they did not give us the share which is supposed to come from our ancestors if they did not give no problem god will take care of god is a faithful god we need to know okay that is the uh, first thing as far as our reward is concerned chapter 5 was 19 matthew 5 19 whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven but whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven so did you hear this verse properly i tell you why i am with the brethren assembly this is the only verse the day i understood this verse clearly i understood i have no right to interpret the bible the way i like i cannot speak for my church they may be doing many things against the bible the sunday you know i shared with you i spoke about uh, uh, martin luther he could have comfortably continued in the catholic church why did he come out when he read the bible he understood his church is doing lot many things against the bible so he wanted to correct his church but the church did not listen so he had to separate from the church and uh, here is the verse which says i will read to you very uh, slowly so that you may understand it very clearly and you may never forget this verse who are therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven what is the consequence when people are teaching things doing things teaching others contrary to the bible breaking the commandments of god even the least commandments of the commandments of the lord what will be the consequence they will be least in the kingdom of heaven so it is talking about believers not about unbelievers as a believer when you handle the word of god 
you should be very very careful and you need to know what you believe what you practice what you teach is 100% agreeing with the word of god you are going according to the word of god you need to know it very clearly then we see here the second group but who does and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven so second group what do they do they do as it is written then teach others then he will be called great in the kingdom of god now today people may uh, call you by big names and all you know we know that there are various titles given to these people who practice lot of wrong things uh, you know holy father and a great father most reverend father you know lot of titles are given probably you may not be knowing any of those things you have no relation to it but when you reach heaven if you stood for the word of god you practice the word of god you taught others as the bible as it is i tell you its consequence is going to be great in kingdom of heaven you shall be great in the kingdom of heaven now until i studied this verse i was thinking all the people who are going to heaven are going to be equal there we are going to be in the same level but this was was again an eye opener to me in another area that is all believers are not going to be equal in heaven all believers will go to heaven so these uh, people who are going to be made small in the kingdom of heaven they are also reaching heaven all believers will reach heaven but what is happening all are not going to be equal brothers and sisters let us be very careful and many big people on the earth today they are going to be made very small and uh, those people who are not known much but they were faithful to the word of god they handled the word of god very carefully they studied the word of god they practiced the word of god as it is and they taught others the word of god as it is and they are going to be great in the kingdom of god so one day you you have to decide whether you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven or not if you want to be you have to know what is written in the word of god and you have to practice that then you have to teach others as it is then only you will be great in the kingdom of heaven so many believers will be great in the kingdom of heaven why we stand uh, for the word of god why we hold on to the word of god why this bible is very very important to us why we take the bible seriously it is otherwise it will have eternal consequences and people who take the bible very lightly they will they are believers but they don't uh, read the word of god properly they don't study the word of god properly they don't understand the word of god properly they don't practice the word of god properly and they don't teach others the word of god as it is and the consequence is going to be very very terrible they will be very small in the kingdom of god not for one or two days for eternity okay we'll read only one more verse by the time our time will be over uh matthew 6 19 and 20 lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal so here jesus is saying you make treasures in heaven for that what we have to do we have to use our time our talent our uh, our uh, money you know if you want to have a treasure here on this earth what do you have to do 
you have to work hard and then store okay here for the kingdom of god you work hard you use your time you use your energy and you use your money then jesus is teaching you will have a treasure in heaven so a believer has to be very careful because our present life present life that is from salvation to our departure from this world will have eternal consequences it will have eternal consequences so every believer should be very very careful in his life so two things we have notice here jesus is teaching how a person can enter into the kingdom of heaven then a person who is going to heaven should think about his rewards in heaven on the basis of the quality life he lived from day one of his salvation until his departure from this world god is going to give us lot of rewards in heaven so rest of the things god willing we will study next monday and uh, uh, let us understand this life is not uh, a vain life god has called us to live a life uh, very carefully and very prayerfully and uh, god wants his people to receive lot of rewards in heaven so we are here on this earth as believers so that we when we reach heaven we may receive lot of rewards may the lord bless this words